Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mayonnaise and Every Bite, episode four. A couple of announcements before we get started. Please like and subscribe. And in the comments, if, if you could take the time and let us know what kind of topics you'd like us to cover, or who you'd like to see on the show, that'll really help drive the creative process. This, this thing is a work in progress. Each episode gets better, uh, which is something I'm really enjoying, but I want to hear from you guys as well. On that note, um, regarding topics that are maybe, maybe a little bit messy, a little bit sensitive, or maybe even a lot sensitive, I, I think that Patreon is going to be where I try all those. Um, I'm going to put things, at least I'm going to try putting things behind a paywall where we can be sure that everyone involved wants to be there. Everyone, everyone is invested in tackling those issues together. Um, everyone's interested in the inquest and pushing the creative envelope on some ideas. So check that often. Check back uh, soon. I'm, I'm working on that content. As I, as I sort of shelve other things in my life and take care of administrative and, you know, life problems. Everybody has those. Um, more information on Patreon. Um, that'll be sure to be there. This conversation, the one you're about to uh, about to ingest here, is with Ivan Munyengengo, um, whom you saw last time around in episode three. This time around ter- proved to be very stimulating. It was a good conversation. I really enjoyed it, and uh, we get deep into some subjects that really matter to both of us. We talk about the developing policies in Rwanda regarding some of the um, the subject of reopening gyms, you know, services in general. But you know, I, Ivan is a proprietor of a gym, and you know, this has been a, a major sticking point for him. Um, you know, talking about public health and all these other things. So we talk about that. We also get into religion, if you can believe that, and um, learning disabilities and mental health, among some other things. On that note, I want to briefly address before we get started a moment. During the conversation, I think it comes around minute 51 or something like that. I'm not done with the edit yet, so I'm not sure exactly where it takes place. But it's deep into the conversation where, you know, we're intensely covering some of our experiences. And I take on, um, there's a moment where I take on a, a mock stern tone, very stern tone, to tease Ivan about something. And, I, you know, it was 100% in jest. I come, I come from a background where we tend to give each other a pretty hard time. We tend to take uh, issues, issues that are ve- that are very serious, but also you know, in our very serious while being vulnerable, um, but also you know, take the opportunity to laugh about them because there's often a lot of irony in the way that they manifest. And I think that at least in my background, where I come from, that can be cathartic. But at the same time, everybody has a different way of processing. Everybody has a different way of communicating. And you're never quite sure as you're getting to know someone or even if you know someone very well when you're getting deep into some issues and you're being very vulnerable exactly how what you say and how you act or or what's going to affect what or what's going to strike a nerve. Um, You can see it's clearly a little bit of a trigger. And um, it, it it unsettled our conversation a little bit. And we moved past it. Uh, we kept we kept going ahead and um, continued to have a great conversation. But I wanted to acknowledge it, and I wanted to make note of it just so that you as the viewer understand that this conversation started well before we started recording, continued afterwards. It's an ongoing conversation, and I did address that moment with him afterwards. Um, not not necessarily to be like, oh, I'm so sorry, bro, or anything like that, but just to, just to sort of dig deeper into um, taking the opportunity to observe what affects us and how and um, how we communicate. So it was very interesting. And um, anyways, you can watch it for yourself. I'm going to let you enjoy this conversation. I think I'll leave you with a quote. I think actually of all people, Eminem said, said it best when... Uh, he was quoted as saying, a lot of truth is said in jest. So with that, please enjoy episode three of Mayonnaise on Every Bite with Monsieur Mungengango. Mayonnaise on Every Bite, episode 
five. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Well, <laughs> you've done a couple. Well, the next one will be four, but uh, I'm going to try to have somebody else on and then um, splice them in between. Cool. But anyways, um, yeah, man, what's up? I'm cool. I'm all right. I'm cool. Been away. Just got back from from uh, Akagera with Ak my family. Akagera Park. Akagera Park. In the east of the country. <laughs> yep. That was my daughter's uh, first, of, uh, first birthday, and it was pretty awesome. Man, yeah. that's, that's the ultimate zoo right there. <laughs> you ever been to a zoo? Shut up. No, never. Yeah, I didn't think so. There's not too many zoos in Africa. I hate zoos. Why? Why having a zoo in Africa? Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's an argument for it. I mean, it's not that it depends, easy. It depends on where you live in Africa. but you I mean, zoos are fucked up. Don't get me wrong. But they are, yeah. Really fucked up. Yeah. So, I mean, ethically, I mean, in all yeah. angles. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, why? Yeah. Africa has a lot of parks, national parks. Rwanda yeah. alone, it's very small. It has, what, six to seven parks, national parks? So that's... That, <laughs> does it? Well, yeah. I only know of three. Volcanoes National Park, Nungwe, and Akagera. We have... Uh, Kishwati, which is like a forest that's a park, I think. Then we have... Um, Never heard of it. Where is it? Uh, somewhere northwest, like above Kibuye, I think, on the way to Gisenyi. I don't know. Am I talking about things that <laughs> actually can be fact-checked? <laughs> no. Man, you're supposed to know this shit. You're going to have to turn in your Rwandan card here I don't work soon. for RDB, man. <laughs> <laughs> The Rwandan Development <laughs> Board know. for everyone. <laughs> They're in charge yeah. of this stuff. Yeah. No, we actually may end up... How many national parks? Anyway. Oh, shit, you're actually right. Three. Anyways, the argument for zoos, I think the only argument for zoos, is the moral conundrum aside, is that there's a lot of animals that are not safe to go and see. You can't just, like, go and hang out with them in the wild. So, like, if... In the West, at least, they don't exist there, so they have to import them. And also, if you were to go see them in the wild where they exist, here in Africa or in Asia or wherever, you, it's not a good idea to go and track them down. Oh, yeah. So, but I, I, I'm still not making an argument for zoos, but it's it's a, it's a, it's a, one of those cultural things where, like, if, if you're a kid from America or the West, I mean, you probably went to a zoo growing up. Yeah, yeah. For example, it would be cool if we had a tiger. Yeah, but it's pretty fucked up to keep a tiger in captivity. Like, for example, when I was young, I was... That, that reminds me of uh, Tiger King. You know, I refuse to watch that show. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot... Of, there's there's things on Netflix I refuse to watch. I hear people talking about it, and I'm just like, nope. Yeah. There's books that I'll hear people talk about where I'm like, I don't like the sound of this book, just but I'm going to read Tiger it. King, man. Just watch it. No. Life would be better with that in your mind. Bro, that's hours I'll never get back. What am I going to learn? You're going to learn that there is a psychopath. There's a gay uh, Republican. <laughs> psychopath. Psychopath. That keeps the That cats. keeps a gun on the hip and... Uh, Good for him. And uh, believes in all kinds of very weird stuff, including feeding people... Um, the same food the the cats eat, like the the big cats. Bro, I, I'm <laughs> from America. I've, I've met these people. I don't need to watch that show. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, man. I don't need to watch that show. This, anyways, I'm trying to spend less time on Netflix and on YouTube. I'm getting back into my reading groove, which I'm happy about. But yeah, yeah man, that's pretty cool. I've never been to Akagera, and I've I've been through Numwe, but I've never been on any treks or anything. The only thing I've done is I've been to see the gorillas. The first year I was here, I went to go see the gorillas once. Uh-huh. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, how was the experience like? Uh, it was kind of ruined by being in a group of tourists. Yeah. The hike was so slow because we were with old people mm -hmm. and they were annoying and... Uh, Gotta learn how to accommodate people, dude. <laughs> 
I mean, it was it was within the first six months that I came here, I think, and um, it was just like, okay, is one thing you got to do. Honest, yeah. honestly, I mean, I mean, I probably shouldn't say this, but it was very underwhelming. It's like, all right, mm. there's the gorilla. The gorilla walks right by you. It's like, okay, hi, <laughs> can we go? Is it? Uh, yeah, and the experience must be different now because um, last time you you were there was what seven years ago, six years ago. Mm. Five, six. Yeah. I'd love to see, I would, I'd be much more interested to see the chimpanzee troops in Nungwe. Oh. That to me would be much more interesting. Or birds in Nungwe. I would love to do some of the things in Nungwe because that forest is magical. And I feel like the forest, that the Nungwe forest sort of holds some of the magic of the Rwanda of old. Yeah. I'm reading this document now. It's like, fuck, it's like 400 pages long. So it's taking me a long time to get through it. But it's about um, the. It's a study of um, how they use wood for fuel in Rwanda, mm-hmm. and so there's all these you know historical things of like this is how much forest cover there was at this time, and this is the trees they use and all the species, and it's like it's a oh. dense it's a dense paper. But like, I mean, apparently back before the 1930s, Rwanda used to be 30 percent forest. Forest. Right? forest. Well, wow. it's a lot, you know, and all these. And but I I learned a lot of other things too. Like you yeah. know, I learned that some of the um, tree species that I thought were imported are actually native. You know, like I didn't know ficus trees were native. I thought they were. I don't know where I thought from, they were from. South America or something. You know, and I mean these these trees with the yellow flowers. I thought they were acacia trees, but they're not. There's something else. They're called you know the Nile tulip or something like that. Yeah. Eucalyptus trees are not native. That's for sure. They aren't. Yeah. Yeah, they use they, those. No idea where they are from. Though. But anyways, we want to talk about environment. No shit. So man. far, that's our that's the topic of the day, man. Environment, animals, trees. Why not, man? I mean, what we were talking about earlier, we're genes and operating on an environmental plane. That's who we are. Last yeah. But speaking um, of what happened for me last week, we had a meeting with the Ministry of Sports. Yeah, we any closer to opening? Not the really. Gym? Not yeah. Not as direct as that. But <coughs> we are, of course, move. We've moved uh, closer than we were last week, for sure. How do you move closer <coughs> from open to not open? Yeah, I mean, both from the outlook, both situations are still not open. But uh, in terms of negotiations and how much we've achieved, especially things that they're interested in, we were with the director of RBC. Dr. Mm-hmm. Sabel. Mm-hmm. He's a very influential guy now in this period. And um, Is he kind of like Rwanda's version of Dr. Fauci? He is. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's our Dr. Fauci. Yeah. and uh, Sorry, bro. I didn't mean Yeah. No, no, I mean, for sure. Yeah. Um, so what the idea was, and he came in as, uh, of course, as, an, as somebody, of course, the head of, uh, the head of uh, RBC. Yeah, and um, which is what like about the equivalent of CDC? I guess is it? Yeah, um, I'm not good with abbreviations. Or yeah, he came in as the head immunologist or some or epidemiologist or right, right. I don't know. I'm not sure. But so what do you have speciality. to say? Um, he, uh, you read the letter that I published on Twitter. Yeah, I read it. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, um, I reposted it, man. Yeah, you did, yeah. So, uh, yeah, he wanted to talk a little bit about that. I mean, mm-hmm. without, of course, being direct about the reasons why he's saying what he's saying, but you could feel like probably it's a response to the letter. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, well, that the government is has us in his mind and they know we've been hurting and and they're doing whatever they can. Hurting? Didn't Walker close permanently? Not Walker, actually. They closed uh, the location, though. No, the location, I mean, it, it sounded, yeah, that's my PR thing kicking in. Um, the Turambe shop that was operating within Waka closed. I don't know what that is. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a food thing. Okay. It's a healthy snack. They still have the one in the, town and the one in Kimi. They still have the one in town and the one in Kimi. Okay. But yeah, from how they wrote it, it looked like it's Waka that closed. Okay. So I was happy to also jump on that uh misleading thing um but um disinformation but campaign. it's not it's not that <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just fucking with yeah. you um uh, 
It's a little twist that could work in our favor, basically. So we we um, the only chance we have now is um, left was to obviously work with. I mean, get to understand what our members uh, think about this long uh, closing. So if we could really get the people's empathy, they, I mean, advocacy, and they could be talking about it and mouth to mouth kind well, of situation and. I want. Then, I wonder something like, there's. Are there any bailouts being rolled out in Rwanda? No, no, no. Not like in the U.S. Not like uh, but in I, the U.S. But I wonder, like, like in the rich economies. I wonder, like, um, you know, if it hit the bottom line, for example, like, you know, like essential businesses, like, you know, you argue that, you know, gyms should be, or at least health workers should be essential workers. Yeah. yeah. If not gyms, at least keeping people active, active during these hard times should be essential yeah and i agree 100 percent. and i think yeah. you'd, even this you know the guy the head of rbc would be did i have that right rbc or is RDC? yeah yeah rbc yeah i mean i don't see how you could argue with that right you're trying to keep people from getting sick and dying or being more prone to covid but i would imagine that like for example like i know like waka like extended people's memberships mm. i don't know like what you know, it's difficult from a business owner's standpoint during lockdowns or when your business is closed. It's like, what do you tell your customers? It's like, well, most memberships are on a month to month or year to year, right? Yeah. So, you know, people have, you, a lot of people pay up front, correct? Yeah. So, what do you tell people as a business? Like, well, you paid for a service that now you don't get as a business. Yeah. It depends, and then the industry really get hurt because um, well, there be are lots of things that uh, it it differs. It differs uh, uh, gym to gym. So some gyms can afford to extend memberships, for example, and some other gyms cannot. Well, not and just extend, but like if you go if you go to the government and say, "Listen, I'm a business, and I have this many millions of francs yeah. in membership dues that people want back now." So I'm in the negative, and so what's the government going to do to save my business? Yeah, right. Like, how, does the bottom line ever fall on? Don't think about what the government can do for you. Think about what you can do for the. <laughs> <laughs> that you, you borrowing some American patriotism? <laughs> like, don't ask what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Exactly. That's not yeah. something they do. They say that here. Yeah, they do. Yeah, it must be in Kenya Rwanda because that's usually something you only hear. In the no, they say it. it's a thing. Mm. I don't know who said. I don't want to quote the wrong person. Well, but, it's a patriotic. Uh, yeah, it's a patriotic sentiment for sure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, on, still on that uh, subject, our biggest—I feel like my biggest fight at the moment is um, is on how we can be affiliated to the Ministry of Health more, right, than um, sports. Because makes sense. Yeah, for for so many reasons. Until that, until there's a weightlifting federation, you're not really in the sports section, anyways. We're not. We're not. You read the mandate; it doesn't say anything about fitness, yeah. and um, this is something uh, that can be fact checked. And um, I, I, I really am I'm welcome to have a huge debate about it. About I mean, either we are there, and then they do something about changing the policy that governs that uh, that institution. Maybe you could start a federation for weightlifting. And yeah, or we just go to, let's say RBC, part of the preventive healthcare. They have something with NCDs, non-communicable diseases. Mm. Um, yeah, they're dealing, they're dealing with the Rwanda Heart Association Yeah, in regards to heart staff. They are dealing with diabetes, Yeah, they're all kinds of NCDs. So we should be partners among others that deal with RBC on a daily basis because we are in the preventive healthcare. Yeah. 100%. I mean, whether you, yeah, thousand percent. it's just that we are on the positive side. If you look at that healthcare continuum of sick, well, fit, we just on the- You're on the invisible side. We're on the invisible side. And we talked a little bit about that last time, but so, I mean, we could go on and on about this because this is kind of a philosophical topic, but, um, what's the status of this moment like what do they say exactly they say like okay come back to us in a month in a week yeah i mean the i the the moving forward the agreement is that they're going to do like a physical assessment of how each facility is in terms of uh, size and equipment and what could be done to actually uh, bring it to uh, a possibility of reopening Com compliance compliance 
then um probably they will have to 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 come up with new regulations that are customized gyms right. to gyms because of course after realizing that not every facility is uh physical state is the same as well, how many gyms are there You're talking about like eight six seven eight i yeah. didn't realize so there's a bunch of smaller ones there's a lot of smaller ones yeah well i mean and also in this period that we were closed I, two two good sized gyms uh were opened one in kimi and another one in town Mm, okay i i didn't thought about that i i had naively assumed that it was basically cali fitness and walker and, walker. No, and no, the no. hotels no it's a it's a it's a whole industry i see of- well that that changes a little bit because like basically if they say okay gyms can open then maybe some of these smaller facilities that aren't equipped to do things properly or meet the, the standards of compliance are going to have yeah. all kinds of weird things going on yeah Basically, you, just like what happened with the churches, not every church is open, but churches are open. So some churches, yeah, received special, yeah, yeah, permissions to huh. open. Yeah, man. Even in so, California, most churches are still closed. Yeah, yeah. I think my uh, my sister told me just recently. Yeah. Uh, she sent me a message, and she was just like, she plays piano at church. She's a piano teacher. And um, and she was saying that like their church has become super busy. They had to add like a, a third service. They have like an early one, and they usually have like an early one and a late one. Now they have three, yeah. because their church is the only church that's sort of defying the mandate and open. Okay, I'm a apolitical <laughs> on the issue. I'm not saying go to church. Or, I'm not. I don't have an opinion. I wish I could be in that position. I mean, yeah. Even before COVID, I wasn't super inclined to go to church, but. Um, <laughs> My bike is my church, bro. That's where I get all my praying done. So religion, tell me. Religion? Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Where, where, you, where you from? Are you from a religious family? Yeah, very. And how did you distance yourself from it? Or help you? Um, I grew, I would say. I don't know if I distanced myself from it. I grew up in a very, a very sort of conservative um evangel we call it evangelical christian background so you know mm-hmm. jesus is your savior you need to be born again yeah i've read the entire bible i've got parts of it memorized mm-hmm. memorized the entire book of james once mm-hmm. and i'm dyslexic <laughs> you know wow. how long, you know how long the double t- work <laughs> dude do you know how long the entire book of james is i don't know i think it's like eight chapters i have to check i had to be able to recite the whole fucking book by memory wow that was like one of the things i had to do to graduate high school and yeah. i was homeschooled so i never went anywhere that was my anyways. yeah um yeah I was, I was raised that way and i've just um you know it's i don't think i mean no one's omniscient that's the kind of the place i've come to mm-hmm. i'm a i'm a believer in in science it's hard i mean there's so few things that are really truly knowable so mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm I am a seeker of truth, and man, I wasn't prepared for this question. It's difficult to know. I know that I'm not God. Yeah. If God exists, I don't know much about it, or him or her, right? But I, here's what I will say. Here's what I will say in terms of distance mm-hmm. from my evangelical Christian roots. Yeah. Is that when you grow up from a young age, being taught something is truth, mm-hmm. right? And it carries with you all through your formative years. And I define the formative years to be like, you know, when you're hitting puberty and becoming a man, basically. So like make 11, 12 through like 14, yeah. 15, 16. Yeah. Um, w- w- when that's really ingrained into you, mm-hmm. it's sort of like in the back of your skull. It's sort of like this, uh, you know, false neutrality where you just you view the world through that lens culturally, mm-hmm. whether you want to or not. Right. And you really have to sort of do a lot of work to notice it. Yeah. So I'm not like the kind of person who's just like, Ivan, you need to be born again. Have you found Jesus? I'm not there. Yeah. But I'm also not in a place where I'm I'm an atheist mm-hmm. necessarily. Now some people would say like I'm you know the new atheist or I'm agnostic. Yeah. I, I mean lang- we were talking about language earlier. I think language is important. Yeah. I feel like 
I feel like I have as much faith as it is possible to have knowing what I know. Right? Yeah. So, you know, for example, but but here's what I will say. I, I, I don't know much. What what my faith really took took more of the form that it has now when I went to AA. Mm-hmm. Being an alcoholic. Yeah. When I went to AA like six, seven years ago, in AA they encourage you to reach out to a higher power. Mm-hmm. Right? They don't ask you to give it a name. Yeah. Right? It's not Jesus. It's not, you, know, you can if you want. Something that could help you but, that's above that. Or... But basically, you know, the first step in AA is just to realize that you're powerless over your addiction. Right? And mm-hmm. we can get into a discussion about addiction. But basically, whatever God is, it ain't you. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, you know. I mean, the, and, and, but the, and, but this and, is. And speaking of that, I mean, when you look at your power to create things, the, the simple things. True, true. I was uh, going there next. How is that? Uh huh. How is that? Yeah. Well, I mean, different from. Well, I'm. I'm. This is something that um, a topic that I'm quite fascinated with, amongst others, is the whole idea of human sovereignty. Yeah. Right. You know, because, because still on that, what mm-hmm. makes me not go to pray mm-hmm. is that I feel like I, I get difficulty connecting with. I mean, understanding who, mm-hmm. what. Mm-hmm. I should pray mm-hmm. too because I myself believe that I'm a God, not the God, but I possess. I see uh, what you're saying. Yeah. In, in the sense that you are a sovereign being. Yeah. You possess something of the divine. Yeah. Well, even the Bible will say, like, I can you, take life, I can create life. I can go as. Definitely in some senses, that. yeah. Yeah. But, um, I mean, the whole idea of God is something that transcends humanity. Um, omniscience is impossible for humans. We don't understand consciousness, at least not yet. And but here, but the weird, the weird thing is for me is that having those roots in Christianity uh-huh. is that it's it's so deep in my memory that verses from the Bible pop up all the time, references from the Bible, statements from the Bible, yeah. and in in sort of a mythological sense in sort of an abstract statement about the world. Yeah. They're very useful. Very, yeah. Yeah. It's, not, you, it's not the diction you, it's not the dictionary. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> yeah. If you take it if you take not, it literally, then you, it's yeah. like, okay, well God God condones genocide. God says that, you know, all gay people are going to hell. There's a whole bunch of stuff in the Bible. If you take it literally, you're gonna end up in a pretty silly place. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So um in terms of being born again But, but they can be good guides. There there's there's good pointers in there. Yeah, I really like some people's uh, deconstruction of what the sort of stories point to. Yeah, um, but man, like in terms of in terms of omnis- like omniscience versus sovereignty, I, as far as I understand, the the idea of human sovereignty, the origins of it come from not necessarily the Enlightenment, yeah, but from early early theological Christian thinking right uh-huh. man is made in the image of god ergo and therefore that's an independent person right and this is written into the do. u.s constitution for example right you know every every, every human being has unalienable rights uh-huh. you know and but this idea of human sovereignty on a, on a philosophical level is fun to talk about but you have to reach a certain level of privilege and mm-hmm. prosperity even to have the conversation. When you get to a certain level of um, just trying to survive, a certain level of basics, mm-hmm. human sovereignty is kind of, it, it's a luxury. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Because throughout, his, yeah. throughout history, human life, this, this idea that everyone's a special flower, yeah, right? That maybe that's not the same thing as human sovereignty. But human sovereignty is like, Okay, why is a human sovereign? Does a human have a soul? Is it because a human's conscious? What 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 are your criteria? And then you have to ask, okay, is it is it being a sovereign being or is it being a sentient being? Is it is, hu- it, is it the fact that there's no one like you? Is it the fact that we have language? Is it the fact that we copy? have the power? Like how how who else or what other creatures have sovereignty? Right? Do whales yeah. have sovereignty? They're pretty smart. Elephants? What about my dog? 
Love these it. are interesting questions. And, you know, I like, I was, who was I telling? I think I was telling my therapist the story. I had a pet bird that died when yeah. I was young. And I cried for three days because I was so petrified that this bird was maybe not going to go to heaven. Yeah. I was asking my parents, like, is that bird going to go to heaven? Tell me, yes or no. And they were like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> searching the scriptures like well you know there's this little passage here that talks about how there's birds singing in heaven so technically if there's birds in heaven he could be one he of could, them he could be <laughs> i'm just like fuck no yes or no <laughs> yeah. oh man that bo- yeah. that bird that bird is buried in a little box in my pet graveyard back at my mom's house still to this day but this is an interesting topic but i think i think that you know, in terms of what is best practice, it's kind of one of those things that's really difficult to know. Yeah. Right? What is human what what does human sovereignty mean, for example? Yeah. Right? But in the in the modern world, we're so detached from having to deal with violence. Mm-hmm. Right? We're yeah. so detached from any real threat to bodily harm. Yeah. Right? I mean, terrible things I mean, happen in the world. Yes, they do. Yeah. Murder, rape. All kinds of things, okay, domestic well, yeah. violence. Like, yeah. But we're still way far removed from the world where killing was almost an everyday or a very, very yeah. common thing. Tremendous war, progress has happened. Tribal yeah. war or yeah. large scale war where masses, like huge percentages of the population yeah. would get killed. And getting killed was actually, you know, like, you know, Valhalla, like for the, for the Vikings, it was a good yeah. way to go. It was the way you wanted to go. You yeah. wanted to die in battle. You didn't want to die in bed. So our idea of the value of human life and human sovereignty has evolved. But I think that we're a little out of touch with reality. I'm not sure if our feet are on the ground most of the time and we're having this discussion about what is human sovereignty. Do humans have a soul? Most yeah. people are talking about a lot of woo-woo shit. You know, the, I mean, they're, they're, they're lumping like your fucking horoscope and your zodiac sign in with mm. having a soul. You have the divine within you. You know, there's a lot of Whatever things. Whatever that means, actually, I've, I haven't been, yeah, well, able to comprehend. Well, whatever the divine is, I would say, it's, I mean, to 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 at least suspect that human beings have a seed of the divine in them seems maybe we're biased because we're humans, but it seems like a good idea. Seems likely. What is a soul? Is there life after death? I don't know. I don't know. Have we I answered? Need, have I answered your question? We need to. No. <laughs> Very, but I have another question coming. I've just raised which, more, which, more which, which, which would also give us. Um, you mentioned something. You mentioned the word therapist. Therapist, yeah, man. Yeah, and I don't know, Tramin. You, why do you see a therapist? We're talking about mental health now. <laughs> Probably. Why do I see a therapist, um, bro? Because I've been I've been through a lot mm-hmm. in the past half a decade. I've been through a lot, and I lose I was losing my shit. I mean, I'm still in a pretty unsteady place now. Mm-hmm. Basically, I needed help, and I think it's no secret that finding good mental health professionals or mental health resources, period, yeah, in Rwanda. I mean, you can find them. Yeah, the quality is. I mean, it's it's up for people to decide how. I how mean, it's not a country where uh, mental health is a popular subject. Right. That explains uh, why uh, there are so many of uh, so, so little shops, mm. if I can call those shops, like clinics, doctors, right? And um, well, how many places to go to? That's what I mean. Right. <clears throat> and um, and by so little, that creates, of course, um, lack of choice. So we're not. We don't have that privilege of right switching between again, therapists and stuff. Yeah, this so, is again, this is a privilege. It's like it's a privilege to say I have mental health issues. I need someone to talk to. A lot of people don't have that that privilege. Yeah, I'm but a, I'm keep a sovereign, telling me about the reason why. Well, I mean to clarify. So I I'm I'm doing therapy online. I've been doing it for where are we? April now. I think I've been doing it for like almost six months now. Yeah, every week basically I got a video session, which for me is almost as good as in person yeah there's not much difference okay and then there's a chat option where i can send a message about what i'm thinking and then my therapist will get back to me in a day or two yeah but um i mean basically i mean i mean i can't 
we probably don't have time for me to go through all the reasons why me as an individual yeah. need help with certain things. But more or less, I live in a place where I'm very alone. I mean, yeah. I'm surrounded by people, but I'm also very alone in certain ways, in cultural ways, in, in terms of family. Yeah. Right? I'm very isolated and very far away from some of the things that I would need to touch base with. Mm. So I don't really have, and even in the modern world, we don't really have these family structures that sort of serve as these natural therapists. Yeah. So really, I just needed someone to talk to. I needed someone to talk to just to survive because I was waking up every day in a panic. Yeah. And I was basically paralyzed. I couldn't do anything. And I was just like in pain physically, psychologically, yeah. in every kind of way. I was just like, I fucking need help. But also, I just turned 38 last week and I'm like, okay, I'm almost 40. I'm about halfway. I'm, I'm thinking about my, you know, the way the past few decades have gone. And I'm like, hmm, I really want the second half to go different than the first half. Yeah. I don't regret anything necessarily. Yeah. I've learned a lot. You know, even the tragedies and the accidents and the heartbreaks and the mistakes that I've made. Yeah. Even my alcoholism. It's just like, well, you know what? All those things shaped me. And yeah. maybe they prepared me for being able to do certain things. Yeah. Like to write certain things or to yeah. understand certain things or have certain conversations. So I don't want to go back and I don't regret anything. But I, I'm really on a mission to to have 40 to 80 be a much happier, more productive time where I'm doing a lot less harm to myself and I'm yeah. having better relationships and I can be, you know, my, my, I can really capitalize on my human potential. That's the, the reason enough. Yeah. And the more I do it, you know, the, like, you know, if, if for a little while, I was like, man, this is too expensive and we're just kind of talking. It's not really helping. But it aggregates. The better I get to know my therapist and the more we sort of cover history and different subjects and stuff like that, and she kind of gets a map. So it's an old lady. Yeah. Um, a, a very straight, straight talking old lady. That's uh, the kind of person that I like to talk to anyways. Um, but the more, the, the, the better, the better informed the map she has of who I am is the more useful the therapy becomes. Yeah. So definitely, Without I don't plan like on stopping it anytime soon. I'm not in like that, like if emergency. If you could keep, a, keep affording it, yeah, go ahead. I'm not in that emergency phase at the moment, but yeah, man, I think mental health is super important. I think it's something that, um, in the modern world, with families becoming more and more accustomed, yeah, that uh, you know we need options. So I mean, that's that's the short answer. What about you, man? Why aren't you in therapy? Are you in therapy? <laughs> yes. Yes, you are. I actually currently just changed my therapist. Yeah? Yeah. So now you got to start over. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's also a part of me that expects him to be fast in almost like, I wish they could exchange notes. Right. Like like <laughs> so, using a new so browser. Really, can you yeah. just import all my <laughs> favorites? Just, yeah. My browser yeah, yeah, history? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I I, I I I I I'm sure you know this. One of the things that is really hard in in, in getting mental health help is to find a match. A march? Yeah, somebody who you connect. With. A match. A match, not a march. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's all good. So a match. Um, Quick question: Is it here in on location or is it online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm the in person kind of guy. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. that yeah. makes a difference to you. I've paid a couple of bucks on online to some Indian in London in which I was just no two sessions I think maybe three. She was good and um had nothing to do with her being Indian did it. No no no. I'm just I'm just playing Jesus with you. Christ. Yeah. I'm just fucking with Jesus. you. Jesus. Yeah. That's the okay. kind of show this is. We some laugh. human some human in India in we, uh, in London. Pause. Yes. We laugh about these things here. We do. Unless we're having a serious discussion about race in which we can talk about these things, but that's not maybe, what this is about. Yeah, maybe we have a, yeah, a topic about... Sure, we can go yeah, into that next if time. You want. Um, so, yeah, so I, I had to change this guy. Yeah, I, I, I happen to be a good friend of uh, uh, someone who's actually in charge, I would say, probably of the mental health in Rwanda, Dr. Yvonne Kaita Shang. She works with RBC. Huh. And... Um, Probably she's the head of the mental health division. If all I'm not all the family. You should take out stock in RBC, man. You deal with these people <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, she recently recommended me 
um uh, of uh yeah i mean we, i could have worked with her but she's a friend so that's conflict of interest yes and no no but uh to answer your question yes i've been seeing a therapist and uh, for different reasons do you want to know why sure if you want to talk about it um um it's um reasons aren't really known per se because i don't have really a real diagnosis known by you or known by your therapist probably by me my therapist probably stays right. in an angle where he yeah i you know yeah, i resonate with are, that because yeah, yeah. a lot of the reasons why we go to see a therapist is because we know there's something going on we know something's wrong but we can't see it we got a blind spot yeah we need to help I, and personally i would I, i would rather accept that these are the symptoms that i share the same piece of, uh, symptoms as somebody who has ptsd i have a lot of symptoms as the same as a person who has uh anything yeah P yeah like then uh because by the time it's called a disorder or a yeah. pathology or language again then language yeah then you, you there's a tendency to be crippled by that people are so lost in that's where the stigma comes from they go straight to a bad place yes oh um, my god ptsd <laughs> they think they think vietnam they think yeah. war they think yeah. violence they think well you can yeah. get ptsd from I a lot of things i know for a fact yeah that i yeah. pro i mean it's not diagnosed but i have all the symptoms from one to like i don't know uncomfortable absolutely of adhd but i don't want you to tell me that i have adhd i mean i could work myself towards accepting that but do you have hd <laughs> or do you just do you have do you just have a high iq and a certain temperament <laughs> no i'm serious that's, well that's a compliment because i'm following this doctor from canada in, in some university he focuses on the positive side Yeah, you were telling me about of, that. Of yeah, of 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 having um, ADHD, and um, but uh, but for me, it's just I mean the self diagnosis comes from I mean back I mean of course it's a realization that I can only understand now mm -hmm. now that I have the language, the capacity to think through, and I mean also the self awareness because you're not self aware when you're fucking fourteen, but at that not age, usually, yeah, at that age, um, you're self conscious though. I know, yeah. <laughs> sorry <laughs> but um no i'm talking about keeping up with your everyday thing yeah, I yeah. Mean, the changes on your body the how you think and how you, and why and why you don't have and, much self-knowledge yeah you have no clue what's going on your you, your body's changing you're yeah. going through puberty you're getting the whole world is yeah, yeah it's a stressful time so in my high school time i remember having a hard time uh sitting still yeah something as simple as that mm -hmm. people take it for granted I mean, every kid would sit for like five hours following. Every kid? I mean, minus me and others like me. I've, Probably. Uh, what I've heard from certain people that I respect, sorry for cutting you off, yeah. is, that, is that basically the classroom setting doesn't work for the majority of boys. Okay, because some of the... Um, children in higher up in the birth order, I'm not a scientist, I'm just talking about some stuff I've heard. Yeah. Like firstborn... You know, older, like for or earlier, so, so, sorry, I'm stumbling over my thing, but if you're earlier in the birth order mm -hmm. and trending more towards female, the classroom can be a, a better setting for you to learn. But okay. typically, like if you're second born or you're further down the order and yeah. if you're male, yeah, the rate of you having a hard time in a classroom goes up, especially if you have a high IQ and you're intelligent. It's really hard to focus. You need a more dynamic environment. I mean, people are... I mean, people are kind of learning now that the classroom is a shitty place to teach a kid. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's later on now with my life today that I get to learn about uh, what, for example, what are the traits that I see in my personality that don't really right. necessarily align with that conventional setup because I prefer learning with my own alternative ways I've developed over time. Of course, audiovisual being one of the thing. Um, That's I, important I, to know. Yeah. Um, because everybody has got to find out what are the better ways they absorb information and also there's also the information processing know thyself at, at the end, 100 yeah at the end because that's a true education that's a true let me ask you a question then uh-huh so i mean do you is it possible that 
some like I don't I don't know everything about all the shit you've been through in life. We've all gone through a lot of things we don't yeah. t- we don't necessarily tell everyone. Yeah. But like, could some of your PTSD come from being forced into a certain environment for many years that was bad for you, being diagnosed or undiagnosed with ADH, ADHD, mm-hmm. and just sort of dealing with the repercussions of that? Like, if you had been in a better environment, say, where you, where none of these controls or these these sort of constraints were put on the way you needed to learn, and you were able to learn in an environment that suited you, would you have less PTSD? Would, the, mean, would ob- the need for a diagnosis of ADD go away completely? But obviously, obvi- I mean, that's a good question because I believe that we're all different, but not just, but fundamentally. We, we really are different. Right. And I believe that there is no one way, not one format that could work for all of us in terms of education. For right. example, the classroom setup. Then, um, or not just the classroom setup, I mean, the, there are also cultural things we find in place. Many. And um, the more you are asked to behave, perform, do things, be, conduct yourself a certain way. Right. If it doesn't really align with your personality or with the person you are becoming, right. Then there is that friction is going to haunt you in the future. Well, and there's there's, there there's a positive and a negative side to that. And what's positive? Well, here's the thing. In terms of a, in, there's the, the negative side of it, especially if you have a strong personality, like I think you and I probably both do, mm. is that if you're forced into a box or you're forced to conform or you're struggling with normative things from culture, yeah, they're they're in a way oppressive and they're difficult to deal with. And so yeah. people like you and me tend to be people that change the world. That we we tend to change systems. We tend to create our own thing as opposed to fitting into the mold of something, that's, something already there, that's already there. Right? Created, We're divergent yeah. thinkers. Yeah, but we're a minority, right? Yeah. Like I heard someone say once, it's a good idea for most of the world to have plans. Yeah. But even for you and me, or people like us, there is value in a social sense to learning how to play play well with others. Yeah. Right? To not, like, like for example, have you ever heard it said, learn the rules and then break them? Oh, no, never. Like, like for example, like here, here's, here's a classic example. Like when I was a bike messenger downtown LA, we ride fixed gear bikes with no brakes on them, right? Mm-hmm. Insanely dangerous. Totally. I can imagine. Yeah. Not not technically illegal, but basically like anyways, it's the whole counterculture thing. Yeah. But the way that you would ride these bikes, because you have stoplights every block, you know, yeah. you have these, you know, three lane wide one way streets. You have this grid in downtown Los Angeles. You know, yeah. all these high rise buildings and offices. We had to navigate courthouse here, headquarters there. And what you would do, you had no brakes and you have one gear and it's a fixed gear, so you can't stop yeah. pedaling. The only way you can brake is by skidding a little bit to the side. Is do you formulate you, you you create a different map of this whole the whole traffic system in your head? Yeah. And basically, instead of breaking the rules a little bit, like you might on a normal bike, if you're trying to kind of like not be hung up by traffic, yeah, yeah. you break the rules like not 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 a hundred and five percent, but two hundred percent. Yeah. If you go way over here and just it just totally start from scratch yeah. about how you handle traffic, yeah. you're actually safer. It's, if you yeah. have the skills. Yeah. So in the sense of just like learn the rules and then break them. Now yeah. if learning, especially if, especially since rules are there for the for everybody, for yeah. the mass. And There's then a balance. There's going to be a ba- yeah. Yeah. Someone is going to find a way to navigate them of course break up uh, as few as possible since they are there for the community and the well-being of the community comes way ahead of right. the individual needs there's a, there's so, definitely you, a yeah. gas so, pedal brake pedal sort of scenario there but you can yeah. de- i think you i think you have you stumbled on something there that's very true that especially if you're intelligent especially if you have if you're on the edges of the spectrum in terms of temperament in terms of personality or IQ etc that being forced into being forced to conform certain rules, certain normative things yep. can be traumatic, right? Very. And if you don't figure out, I feel. if no one helps you figure out how to navigate those things and what's what, how to deal with maybe your guilt, your yeah. feelings of displacement, your feelings of validity, all yeah. these things, especially in during those young years, which are like secondary school here. Yeah, yeah. Right? Those are really crucial times to those be taught, time. to You're be 14. mentored. Yeah. To be mentored. Yep. So, yeah, you end up as a kid like me that's struggling with uh, focus. So do you, Something as simple as, uh, yeah. 
Do you think it's focus? Is it an emotional or is it a, is it purely attention intentional? But, well, I mean, at that time it was punished as it was intentional, right? So right. There, there were no. all kinds of mechanisms in place ready to dress you to sort of bring you back to the line. I mean, I mean that the symptoms you deal with now. How do you, hydration? Mm-hmm. How do you experience them? Do you experience them as sort of emotionally emotional trials, emotional tra- trauma, or do you experience them just as like I have a difficulty doing what I want to do or what I need to do. Yeah. Well, you, I, uh, at that time, of course, there was no clear understanding of what it is. I could just, if there was like maybe 10 kids that are being punished for the same mistake in a week, yeah. 10 groups, let's say, I would, one name would appear in every group and that would be my name. Let's say there'll be you'll new si- kids. You were singled ki- out. I'll be yeah. So there'll be new kids for the same you, mistake. You're over here on the spectrum of difficult. Yeah. <laughs> you're lo- basically you're low so, yeah. low and in, low in agreeableness. Extremely low. Right. Which basically which fundamentally, I I feel like it's of course something that I get to understand later on that right. that that it's uh my the fact that I'm not agreeable that makes um i mean if around myself right now like i've i can count them very few friends because some of them don't really i mean i have a very low tolerance of bullshit i say things as i yeah, th- yeah, yeah yeah same then um um the fact that yeah as a kid there is that friction that 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 comes between you and the law and you and the rules and the you and the regulations and the you and anything structured right put in place to put order basically right. because there's that way you want to be right that you don't necessarily understand because if you asked me at 14 like okay let's have a conversation so no one was there She's to, men- class, to you mentor like, you huh no one was there to mentor you to no help one you was understand there to mentor me yeah you lost your parents at what age 7 fuck man yeah so um so even if you had me sit down at mm-hmm. 14 yep. and then ask me like come on like you don't sit still you don't like you don't seem to like class you blah 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 mm, yeah um what do you want or what's the best none way none of those questions were useful for you <laughs> none of that no, helped no, no. They, they didn't even happen oh, i mean yeah i mean not we even have that. we have a culture that's so hard on punishing than solving yeah. a problem i hear I so mean, many stories about kids getting beaten in school Literally, not just like that beaten. you can see with the police police will put uh i mean uh, a camera and then go hide on the road yeah because they want you to actually get caught right. or the police itself can hide well, in a bush a, and then a, when you come full speed they will show up hey stop or we, you just get a text message <laughs> It's a good way to make money. Right, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, they're using, yeah. They're trying to be like Europe. That's the way it works in Europe, man. So that culture, I mean, before we, the, before the police, it's in every society. I mean, it's in our society as, as it, we know I it. I think that, so, I mean, this is a whole. Focusing on the punishing makes you lose right. uh, the correction part. It's a shitty it's, model. Yeah. Because I believe model. in correction. So I believe in systems to actually put back people into and it has to be custom correction as well uh, at the same time because uh, uh, there's no such a thing as somebody is correct they obey rules they follow structures they do this and therefore they are labeled as the ideal members of the society and therefore right. if somebody else is not like that they should be correctional that's uh, what they call a model citizen. <laughs> model citizen. And then there should be a way to dress everybody towards that model. Yeah. And um, uh, it shouldn't be like that. I feel like there, no, is, there is a way everybody be. should be a better citizen of the world in their own way. But um, there of should course, be more, when it comes to... There should be more leeway in the system. I agree with you 100%. Yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna. I'm sort of. I'm sort of pushing back as... as uh, I mean, I agree with you 100% because you mm. and I are very similar, I think, in temperament. But they're like, for creative people, constraints can be good, not yeah. necessarily those ones. Yeah. Like I've, 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 I will say as often as anyone asks me, and I've told you many times, like I, I grew up in a really strange environment, but I am really, really grateful to this day that I was homeschooled, being yeah. dyslexic, being the kind of kid I was. Because yeah. if I had been put in the situation that you were put in, yeah, I think my 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 sentiment is that I'd be a criminal today. Yeah. 
that that's the, that would have been my response. Like yeah, it would I would have I, gone off rails really fast. And... I think it would have been so difficult for me that I would have butted up against the system with as strong as my personality is. And considering as as much trouble as I got in, anyways. Yeah, I think that if I had been told to sit in a chair and been in a place where I was punished for being dyslexic or told I had a disability because I was dyslexic, punished for being uh, rough, outspoken, all these things, that I would be 18 and graduate high school and be like, fuck the world. Yeah. Right? Wow. I got I got lucky. I got extremely yeah, lucky. Yeah. So, But wait, so the, uh, you didn't really answer my question, bro. Yeah. I would, what, what I asked you is, how does this... Of course, this is manifesting today. You're taking action, which I applaud you for, mm -hmm. right? You're saying, I want to improve. I want to grow. Yeah. I'm going to seek out assistance doing that. Yeah. Right. You're work. you're investing in yourself, which is yeah. hard to do sometimes. Yeah. So that's, that's number one. I think that's amazing. And I encourage everyone to do that if they need to do that. Yeah. It took me but, a long time to get there. But what I was asking you is, and what I'm curious about is, there's sort of the symptom and there's the blind spot. So mm -hmm. you're telling me about your history. So you're sort of, you're intellectualizing and I'm guilty of this too. Mm -hmm. So my therapist tells me. Yeah. But how does this manifest today? How do you experience it? Is it sort of like things you struggle doing and you're not sure why? You're just experiencing a symptom? Is it emotional? Is it both? It's a little bit of both. I mean, there is that, I mean, you've talked about you being alone. So I'm I'm in the scenes here in Kigali. I would say I'm I'm in, I, I live a pretty good life. I feel man about I town. I have a family. Huh? Man about town. <laughs> <laughs> there was Ivan. No, no, no. I oh, mean, who he with? <laughs> so I I just like everybody in in Kigali. I just you keep I, kicking I wake the up, camera, bro. They're not gonna be able to shit, see. Yeah, me. yeah. It's my uh, my legs moving. You know what it is? Of what pause, I think. Pause. I think you have ADD, bro. You can't hold still. You're fucking up my podcast. So <laughs> you need to get your shit together. <sighs> Breathe. So um um I'm joking. Uh yeah, yeah, but no, you're not joking, probably. You know? No, I'm I'm a hundred percent joking. So um the manifestation in the current events yeah. is I was I was giving, I was laying down the foundation to answer your question. Um I live a normal life in Kigali. Right. Pretty chill, uh, wife and a kid. Yeah. I go to work every day, and I try to keep my pressures to a minimum to right. what I can handle at least. But Man then life manages stress, and then yeah, and then life comes left and right. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's a lot to do with what I expect from myself, right? Which, if it doesn't align with the reality, creates chaos. But then there is also um, my. Um, attitude towards life happens to just uh, not get uh, the pressure from the society. Right. Thank, thank God. Because if there was that, it would be double pressure. That's not what motivates you. I don't you. feel like I live to, I have to live my life up to certain standards. You're especially not trying societal. to please. No, no, yeah. no. So I have my own demons and they, I feel like they come from within. Right. So, um, you have you, you put enough to, pressure on yourself to yeah, motivate you. To, to you motivate. don't really need society's no, pressure. No, no, no. I don't. I feel like I don't need to. Right. So then um, the manifestation of what I seek help for mm -hmm. occurs in so many. I mean, there are of course known things that are quantifiable, that are well researched, like things like anxieties. And things th you can explain. Things I can explain. With language. But, um, yeah, I mean, I've had a heart attack. I mean, not heart attacks. Um, panic uh, attacks. Panic attacks. Me too, but Do I don't know what to call them. Oh, yeah. When you're sitting there and you if can't you, move you, and your heart's racing there, and you're you fucking sweating. And your heart is moving and you're hyperventilating and you're sweating. And then uh, you short, if you're standing, if you're seated, you're okay. But if you're standing... There is going to be shortage. I mean, somewhere in that hyperventilation, mm -hmm. there is going to be, it's not really skipping beats, but there's going to be shortage of oxygen to your brain. Right. You're going to go down. I think everyone experiences that, them differently. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to faint. You're going to go down. 
I, I experience, I'm a very, That's, I have a very calm exterior. So I experience them as sort of like a deeper and deeper inner panic. Yeah. And I become paralyzed. Yeah. I've, uh, I've, I've, um, yeah, I've gone down. Really? For, yeah. Two times. And, um, like recently in the past year? Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. They happen in a, in a very close time frame. So did you kind of learn what the, what the sort of causal events that led up to that were and how yeah, you yeah. know to avoid them? You yeah, can yeah. see it coming. Yeah. So, oh, damn, bro. so those are like the, yeah, I mean, it goes from, it transcends the, the mental to the physical manifestation of right. something that people can see. The body follows and, the mind. And, and yeah. So when that happens, it sort of forces you to deal with it. Huh? It did. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with my shit. I'm a man or yeah. I'm strong or I'm this, or maybe culture society no, doesn't he, have any answers for me anyways. <laughs> And so usually, you deal with no, your no, shit. No, usually, no, no, no. I'm a very soft man, actually. No, no. Usually that's, not, saying, the, that's not the angle I view things. No, no, no. I'm not saying you are. I'm just yeah. saying like oftentimes, sorry, I wasn't trying to project that onto you. I'm saying like oftentimes you look around, you don't really see too many avenues of help or mm -hmm. answers. Mm -hmm. You know that it depends on you. The, sy yeah. the system doesn't have especially, too many options. Especially one of the, one of the uh, symptoms, one of the things you have in mind every time you're going through tough times like that mm -hmm. is that you underestimate help. Yeah. Even if the, you are with a doctor. Or you don't think you, it exists. You don't, yes. You feel like whatever that can come at, a, at your rescue is not enough. So or, or, that's the, that's all right. Or that's that no one would want to, or that no one could help you. Yeah. And that's one war to the left. Yeah. And then by after uh, uh, underestimating help, you over evaluate the danger. That's another war. Do you or do you undervaluate the danger? Uh, you over evaluate it. Even if it's something small, you just mix it. Um, yeah. You could be. I, I never used to be. I, I see what she means. So you, you take something small and it blows out of proportion. It blows out of the proportion that it has. Is, yes. But and maybe, fact, yeah, but yeah. if you're not seeking help, you're under evaluating the danger of your mental health not being addressed. No, at that time, I mean, in that situation, you're not talking about about your mental health. You're talking about the actual danger which is outside you. Perceived it risk, be, right? It could be, yeah. yeah, the perception of danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just get it from that something. Makes sense. Yeah. If uh, you could be sitting in a room and then somebody closes a window because it's windy outside and they don't want wind depending on what's happening on the inside, mm -hmm. then you're like, all of a sudden there's not enough oxygen. No, 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 no one is thinking about it except you. The fact that if they closed it and you didn't see it, if it was behind you, yeah. you would not have reacted that way. I know what you but mean. But the fact that you saw it, you, start, you start entertaining that idea that you are in a closed room right, you get and therefore and it builds yes. and then it builds but it's a it symptom boils. of something it deeper boils. it's probably not the air in the room it's it's psychological probably but well i mean like for me it's auditory da, i mean obviously <laughs> <laughs> obviously yeah I, i'm teaching so. <laughs> things for me it's auditory man i've had a really irrational response to noises yeah i really? like the way certain people chew yeah or depending on my level of, of anxiety. But like, for example, my neighbors, they got these kids who are always screaming. They have a fucking rooster and they have a dog that they train sometimes. And the way they train it, the dog just screams in pain and they honk when they come home. And like some, some sometimes, like if I'm in a bad state already, yeah. assert these, these noises will push me over the edge. And I'm just like, yeah. I mean, yeah. Diff so this is this is actually my first time. The first time I'm sharing all these details. On, yeah. uh, I mean, thank God. Probably you're putting me in a very comfortable. Yeah, no, I'm I'm getting more and I more. I think this is a better. safe space. Um, <laughs> shut up. You sound like that guy in uh, Headspace or Calm. Those apps, those meditation apps. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I'm getting better at sharing this because I believe that it's, it's part cathartic. of cathartic. It's of, good to talk about it. Part of healing. Yeah. So I'm. Um, yeah. So. Especially between men, I think, because I think that men, we, there's not enough community among men, maybe worldwide, but especially in places where we are right now, there's not a real strong community of men that get together and sort of ha have each other's backs. And they be, be vulnerable with each other. Vulnerable, but also keep each other accountable, shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Community amongst men yeah. in a good way. I mean, I'm not talking about getting together and drinking. I can be, I can be part of it, but 
there's uh, there's not enough of that and i think that i think that as men that have something to say and have experiences and have divergent personalities that are already struggling yeah. with the system yeah that it's a your responsibility to yourself to reach out for help and to work on it but also b to be willing to talk about it because you'll find that many people are experiencing the same thing yeah definitely yeah but the reason why I asked you about the symptoms, you know, how, how does this manifest for you? Yeah. Is that my experience was that, you know, I was seeking help because I felt crippled. I couldn't do the shit I needed to do, right? Yeah. I wasn't functioning. Yeah. I was facing big problems. I'm yeah. still facing really big problems. And I still have these moments of panic, right? But like my, the emotions were like so far away from what I had the bandwidth to deal with. That I didn't yeah. even know what the emotions were. Yeah. I couldn't identify them. And it took a couple months of therapy to sort of break them down, you know, and my ther- therapist just being like, mm-hmm. yeah, but how do you feel? Yeah. I'd be like, how do I feel? I don't know. How, I f- how the fuck do I feel? I-, I don't know. Yeah. And then I would abstract my feelings. I would talk about them in the third person without realizing it. She'd be like, no, you that's feel. That's exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, <laughs> well, so what if I feel? Yeah, yeah. She's like, well, that's yeah, important. Yeah. I was like, why is it important? You would talk no. about them as if they're like something outside Something abstract. It's like, no, yeah. you have feelings. Yeah, yeah. No, like she told me something once. She's like, you have you have the right to feel. And it fucking stopped me in my tracks. And I was like, I had to think about it for three days. Yeah. Like I had to keep repeating it over in my head. I was like, I have the right I have to the, feel. Do I? It's like this deep philosophical question. Do I have the right to my feelings? Yeah. I'm still not sure, to be honest with you. Well, well, well. This is so, the yeah. this is the mental health episode, I guess. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's been one of the most interesting uh, parts. We talked about zoology, this. the gym opening or not opening. So mm-hmm. you think it'll be open in a month? I doubt. Because hey, let's bring this full circle. Working out the body, staying active is a huge part. Of mental it's a health. huge part. Huge I mean, part. I mean, without a doubt. I don't. I don't see hugely neglected how my life would be if I wasn't as active as I am. I'm using fitness as a tool to, to, I mean, to disconnect because it starts in the head and then it creates this very disconnect, quickly disconnect or reconnect, inspiring to reconnect probably or to disconnect because when things are like, sometimes you feel like I want to detach myself from myself and then be to move. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's not like you separate the physical self from the mental self, uh, 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 literally, but then you feel like the composition is very clear that you're not the same. And the to physical the, self, my down. physical self helps my mental self very, very well. Right. And I separate that when I want to to, to, to get help from- Well, we are, from, we are embodied. Yeah. Man, this goes back That's, to the religion. Yeah, yeah. Everything, everything <laughs> we, we are-, are embodied. Our brains yeah. are connected to our nervous systems. Yes. Everything is lived. Everything we so, know and yeah. are is embodied. Our emotions, yeah. our thoughts, so they're all chemical. if you're listening to these, uh, move. <laughs> yeah, move. Get out and move. Talk, move. Everything. Yeah. No, man, if I don't ride my bike, I've said this so many times, if I don't ride my bike on a regular basis, I start to become really weird and I don't recognize myself. Yeah. It's, I mean... Even if it's short, I got to go out. Like, And sometimes I don't know what it is. Like, I'll be like, I got to work. I don't need to go ride my bike. I got work to do. And I'll work throughout the day. I'll skip a day. And I'll skip two days. Because once you skip one, it's easier to skip another yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. And then I'm like, so procrastinating and- I start getting all fucked up in the head. I'm like, what is wrong with me? I'm like, oh, I can't ride my bike. No. And then <laughs> and I get on the bike and then like 30 minutes in, I You're go, like, oh. This is neat what I need to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for me, because I've been doing it chronically since age 12. So it's it's like I couldn't stop now if I wanted to. Dude, I need a break. Let, let's wrap it up. I think we've okay. been talking for a while. Okay. Um, let's wrap it up. And I mean, I don't know what we aim to talk about, but we talked about some really interesting things. I think I think that you know, I think people will find these discussions useful in the sense that we're having just frank, open conversations. If we yeah. say anything we didn't mean to say, or it was kind of like, hmm edit that out we can do that but i think that honest open conversation about real issues is really valuable to people especially in this space especially between you know you and i who are you know you and i are very similar we come from opposite sides of the planet yeah 
all all kinds of shit like this. So I think we just end it here, call it a day. We're going to go watch some football, right? Cool, man. Yeah, yeah, of course. You're going to educate me on... Uh, on who Spurs is. Not just who Spurs are, like how football works. <laughs> I'm illiterate. That's like, that's like a... <laughs> okay, we out. All right, bro. Next time. Super. Bye. Wow, we ended up talking. Yeah, man, that was good. Uh, we meant to have part because we...